And what we were going to do today, actually, rather than starting with the material that I've given you, is that uh, we were going to open up a discussion where you could listen a bit or ask questions, maybe, depending on how Mary feels about that, uh, about Mary's life, either now or in the first century. So that'll give you an opportunity to do something you've never done before and nobody else has ever had the opportunity to do before. Um, obviously, Mary's really nervous. Uh, first time in front of everyone. But looking as beautiful as ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do today is probably, with the outline, we'll do this outline a little later. And uh, Mary wanted to do this mostly, and she can tell you the reasons why she wanted to do it in a minute, but mostly uh, to challenge some of her own emotions about what's, what's happening for her. And so, um, she's worried about how gently you might treat her, or otherwise. Um, but uh, one thing you'll learn about Mary in time is that she is a very brave woman. And, uh, and so you will actually start feeling that, I think, here, over time as you get to know her. So I'm really happy she's with me. And, um, and we may even finish up in future doing some sessions together. Uh, that's probably the way it will pan out in time. And all of you have got the, did all of you get the email about the different sessions coming up? Yes. Today? Now, I could feel some, some reflections about the sex and sexuality discussion. <laughs> In other words, a lot of you are real keen on that discussion. <laughs> so, so I could feel that. And that's really good, actually, because uh, we can cover a lot of things in that. That's on, isn't it? Yeah, we're still getting some feedback, so uh, it's going to be annoying unless I just drop it down here. <coughs> All right, so, and as to how we're going to progress then on this particular issue, I think I'll just hand it over to Mary, and I might actually turn off my mic so it doesn't do uh, this. It's a combination of those. Hi everyone. Can you hear me at all? Uh, no. So, so if I turn this one off and we up the volume of that, see if that happens. I definitely need one. I'm feeling a scared, so... I just, I just really wanted to say hi to everyone today, because I've met lots of you, um, and I realise lots of people have different ideas about me and even what my name is and, and all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, so here I am. And, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this has been a pretty uh, powerful and strange journey for me to even get to this point. And it's taken me about a year. <laughs> um, um, and I don't have everything. Yeah, that is my disclaimer. <laughs> uh, and um, but I feel like this is my life now, so I'll step into it and uh, let's know each other. <laughs> I, I, and I really haven't had all these feelings just in the last five minutes that nobody really cares anyway. <laughs> so if you're just like okay, you want me to talk about that <laughs> Like it, um, so I'll ask some questions. <laughs> What's your name now? My name is Mary. Mary Luck. Um, yeah. um, I'm, I'm from Queensland. I was born in Brisbane and I grew up in the Mud Mountains. Yep. Uh, and I, I'm an occupational therapist by trade. I've worked for about 10 years doing that. And, um, in Australia and abroad, I worked in Lebanon and Scotland and a few different places. Yeah. So what drew you to go to Lebanon? Uh, I went with Australian Volunteers International and I was working in a refugee camp, um, living and working in a refugee camp with Palestinian refugees in Beirut. Uh, 
Yeah, and that was something I felt really drawn to. And I actually, um, when I met AJ, my career was heading in that direction. I'm halfway through a master's in international health, and I felt my future would be in working in foreign countries in aid and development. It's looking a little different at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> So when you first uh, when did you first hear about me? Uh, I had just two days prior um, hopped off the plane from Lebanon where I had left my dream job and my dream men <laughs> um, all behind. And AJ was in my parents' laundry talking to people about the divine truth. And I <laughs> Not about what he was saying, because I really liked what he was saying, but why on earth would you tell people to do this? <laughs> That's just stupid. Even if you are. <laughs> Don't talk about it. <laughs> Which happens, by the way, to be my law of attraction last week as well. I've had lots and lots of people. Quite a number of people email me about why I'm so stupid as to say I'm doing this. Anyway, so, that's, that's good um, so, so we met then at uh, so about just before New Year's, um, a year and a half ago, I suppose. And then, and, and how was I with you? You mean it's <laughs> um, you didn't talk to me, and I wanted to talk to you about what you were saying, and I was very frustrated because I was asking you questions and you just didn't seem to answer. Uh, I was very shy. <laughs> you don't believe me. Yeah, I was. I was very shy, I couldn't even put two words together properly. Okay. Okay. And um, then I found out um, a few weeks later that AJ felt that he was my soulmate. And I thought that was very strange. <laughs> On a number of levels. <laughs> um, firstly, because I didn't want to be any kind of good looking figure ever. <laughs> and, um, because he didn't talk to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I stood on that for a few weeks. And then I thought, I'm oh, not having this man going around the world thinking that he's my soulmate, I'm talking to other people about it and not me. So I emailed him <laughs> and I said, What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Please tell me what you think. And then I thought that he would just email back and go, Oh, it was just just something I thought, and it's not anything. A big mistake. Yeah. Which I continued to believe for about six months. So I, I was overseas by this stage. Uh, so, so I was overseas, and I get this email. And by the way, the date that the email was dated was February the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally, but it was Valentine's Day, and uh, anyway, I I just saw this Mary Luck, and then this um, I forget what the subheading was now, but I just saw Mary Luck, you know, in my inbox, and I was so afraid to actually open the <laughs> message because what had happened a few weeks earlier before I left uh, Australia was that. Mary, I could feel some quite strong anger emotions uh, from Mary, um, particularly about me saying that I was here. So that, that was the main, the main issue. And then all of a sudden I get this email from Mary, who I feel, who I felt at that time, and still feel, of course, it was my soulmate, right? So, so all I could do is just sit there for a while in some silence looking at my inbox. And eventually I opened it and there was this lovely message that I thought was lovely. We read it again the other day, just in the, it was a two line message saying, what the hell are you doing talking about? <laughs> 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 um, you missed it there. And was there. What, what did I miss it? You missed the yell that came from the room. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
So we were in Dallas at the time, and uh, on our travels overseas, and, and yeah, I was quite happy about the situation. Yeah. And, and then I wrote an email in reply. So what did you think about that email in reply? I guess I, I went through a lot of really strange emotions then um, because AJ wrote back and said, yes, I think you're my soulmate and um, lots of other lovely things um, about, I can't bring them to mind at the moment, <laughs> but I felt very confused because this, this is a man that I had, I had just met and really not, um, really felt connection to, um, but I felt very drawn into this interaction with him. Um, so we corresponded for a little while, um, and I continued to be very distressed about the whole Jesus situation. Um, and eventually I decided that I would join him on his travels in, in the UK by then. Which is great, hey? It's great. Well, I have the kind of personality that I... I don't like to leave, leave any stone unturned. <laughs> and also, I have an to my nature. So I needed to sort it out for myself, but I thought about that. But I continued to feel that I would get there and he would spend five minutes with me. But, oh, no. I was wrong. I mean, it's definitely not the good one. We just continue on with our lives. And I have not thought it. Those kind of events. Um. And I'll just add that 
even when I was entertaining the idea that AJ was Jesus and that I was the song, I at no time thought that I would have a memory like that. Like, I didn't even think about grief as a wife and mother. And that, and, um, because I went through a lot at that time about, am I inventing this? How can I? What is happening? I've never experienced anything like this. And I kept looking for rational explanations as to why this is, why, why am I feeling this? And I couldn't find any. And part of the emotion I felt at that time was, you can't be with this person because it's emotionally dangerous. It's just going to it can happen again. I'll lose him. Um, yeah. So that because really because of that, we ended up spending. On, I just became more and more afraid about what was happening. Um, but we ended up being apart because I I couldn't um, reconcile this experience with my life as I wanted it to be, um, and I still have issues with that. <laughs> I, it's not really where I saw my life going. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And I was just wanted to say a few things about it too, because I can't help doing that. <laughs> and it wasn't just that one experience that Mary had. She had from that time on, there's a series of experiences uh, which were very similar in nature about a number of different things that that had nothing to do with her life now. So, and but they were all deeply emotional, and uh, and obviously also deeply confusing. And so, um, so you can understand this this feeling of fear building up and building up and building up, you know, because it's just like any more time she spends with me, she goes through another emotional experience about or a memory about something about the first century, but it's not a memory in pictures, like we're often, you know, with, with the New Age philosophies of reincarnation, that they often say, oh, you have these pictures in your mind about previous life and so forth. It's actually not like that. What it is is these deep soul-based emotions that overwhelm you completely. And uh, in the process of overwhelming you, you, obviously your mind kicks in and starts saying, what, 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 what's going on, you know? And many of you, if you think about it, you have the same thing happening with some of your own emotions, don't you? Like, you know, when you get into that state where you're really in a causal emotion and you start, in your mind, rebelling against the emotion. Like, you start thinking, am I going nuts now? What's happening to me now? And it's that kind of feeling, but it's that kind of feeling related to a life and identity that you weren't conscious of. So that's, so it's a very, very confusing process. So, it's understandable that uh, Mary, was, Mary was in this state. In fact, that was the state I was in at the beginning of my memory process as well. So that was all about a year ago. And um, I have tried to sort of uh, look, at, look at all of my emotions about this issue from a lot of angles. Um, and including being away from AJ and feeling that this can't be truth. And I guess where I've come to now is that I feel like it must be truth. Um, which is something I feel really scared about. Um, and I should qualify that he now is my dream man. <laughs> <laughs> For today, at least. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like to just mention some of your recent emotions, or, or do you feel you'd like to stay away from them? I was thinking. Well, I, I have the overwhelming sense that nobody really wants to know. Why would you want to know? Do you want to know? Yes. 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 So that one of Mary's emotions obviously is 
that nobody wants to know me. And you can understand that, like, all through history, she has been the woman who's been basically, basically kept, kept away from the truth all, all of her life. So, so it's a fairly big emotion. I guess the emotions that I have been uh, going through feel, if they feel very personal to me and I don't have a religious background at all. I don't know the Bible or anything. Um, and I don't have a feeling like AJ is Jesus and I'm Mary Magdalene. I, I just feel like there's some other life that I've had and this is my husband, and um, a few of the emotions I've been connecting to lately are about um, just being very young and falling pregnant as a result of a rape, and being, being turned out of my family home and um, giving birth to a son and of him dying because I couldn't care for him adequately because I had to leave him and I couldn't return to him and the emotions that I've had are just so intense and overwhelming and um, I feel a lot of shame and grief about having a child that I couldn't protect. I've been feeling a lot of emotions and grief about um, losing a, a husband, losing a dream and feeling very unsafe and afraid for my life and my daughter's life I've had feelings about sexual, sexual shame that don't I don't know, they don't respond to my current life. I, I feel quite afraid of people um, harming us. Way I died was that um, the people that were closest to us actually finished up causing my death, and and you know so so for Mary and myself that's an issue we've had to work through um, in this life is how much the people who were closest to us affected us, and what what we've found is that um, one of the emotions that we both had is is a fear of getting too close to people that are really close because and particularly when their emotional condition isn't one of love yet because they make assumptions about who we are and what we're doing and things like that and then they make decisions based on those emotions that are often out of harmony with love and that's what actually created my death in the first century so understandably uh, Mary also has this feeling of um, you know, being afraid to even be exposed 
in a public way, um, or even in a private way, about um, and, and the effects that, that that exposure may have later down the track. Um, so, a lot of people, what a lot of people do is they make assumptions in their own heart about what should be happening. And this happens already a lot in my life where people think, well, if he was really Jesus, he should be doing this and he should be doing that and he should be doing this and he should be doing that. Not understanding that I'm coming from a different place to what they're coming from. I'm coming from this place of what would God do in this situation, not, with, not what would man do in this situation. But in the first century, most of the disciples were coming from a point of view of what would a man do in this situation. And they were very, very interested in setting me up as like a king over the Jews. And in the process of doing that, they created conflicts that were unnecessary around me. And they basically created a conflict situation <coughs> and then threw me in the middle of it, unawares, and which often I would have to then work my way through. And, um, and it happened in each case because they weren't trusting of what I was saying to them, that my kingdom was no part of this world, that you know, it wasn't anything to do with this earth-based life that I was talking about so much, aside from this state of bliss. And so, naturally, um, a lot of Mary's feelings, even about people that are close to us, can often be feeling like, oh, but what are they going to do next? You know, they're nice to us now, but what might they do next? And, um, and the truth is that um, already in the time she's been with me, there's been a number of people that have been quite close to me who have then gone down the track of ridicule or, or, or doing things that are out of harmony with love through their anger um, that, have, that have affected us and could, and could have affected us negatively uh, if, a, if a, we were in different conditions. So, um, so that's, a big, that's a big emotion to work through for, for the both of us. Um, would any of you like to ask Mary any questions? I don't know if you feel By the way, this process that we're going through is a process where we have to allow our own emotions before memories appear and, uh, and before we have clarity. So a lot of times we have feelings about situations in the first century, and this is not so much with myself now. My, now my clarity is fairly, fairly good, but um, obviously for Mary, she's still going through this process, just like Cornelius was, right? So, um, so if we can't answer all of your questions because there are just some things that are still locked up in us emotionally uh, that we still are yet to do with the emotions on. So if you can bear that in mind if you're asking questions. Um, but I'm just, I just like some of the things you've written in your diary. Um, I don't know if you'd like to share some of them. Um, that, uh, that might help with some of you like our emotions are very similar to yours right so <laughs> it's just a, just about a different line that's a much longer line a uh, different type of line Jen would you like to we haven't got a mic so I might have to repeat the question so you've got to make them short and concise questions when I approach you Mary I think you will Oh, 
Might have to agree with you. I'm trying not to project my own stuff when I share my gratitude. So the question was, what does it feel like to, uh, what was it, what was the process of accepting that I was her soulmate? I guess emotionally it's still a process that I'm going through. Um, how did you get clarity? Probably just from feeling my emotions, you know? Um, because actually a lot of the emotions that I had, like some of those ones that just related, were almost uh, adverse emotions towards him, if that makes sense. Like, but being with him triggered, I I have felt more emotions than I've ever felt in my whole life. And, um, so I guess, yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I still at times think I can't fit this all into, into me, like it's too big and, and I, it's, I just have to go with my emotions because my brain can't really go with everything that's happening. Um, but I, I guess it, it's more of a feeling of being really strongly attracted. Like, I can't leave this person alone. Like, I tried having done the life that I really can't. So I can't I, I had this funny feeling in the beginning that when you meet your soulmate, you know, angels should in the sky and sparkles, and you should gaze into each other's eyes. And uh, I don't think that happens for anyone. <laughs> Not unless you don't want to load the emotion.
son of his is on. How much have you shared with your parents and how are they handling it? And how are you handling it with your parents? <laughs> well, I probably won't say too much, just like my parents. Um, I'm not sharing the students. very personal perspective. She, ha she has the most personal perspective of anyone in the universe about my life. And for that reason, like everything that's happened between us and happened to me and happened to her is very personal. And, uh, and so you can imagine there's a lot of those kind of personal emotions. If you, if you had a very loving relationship with somebody and then, and then that person actually um, decided through their through a course of decisions that they made they die one of the feelings that you will have to feel in that state is often a feeling of rage or grief if you like and, and you can understand that right it's like it's almost like if the person had made a different choice they'd still be with you right so and, and it might even be just a choice to walk, not walk across the road that particular day or a choice to not go there instead of and go here instead and so naturally there's a lot of emotions associated with the personal things that happen between, between you. And so all of the things that uh, Mary has experienced with me have been quite traumatic at times. And, uh, and personally traumatic for her, um, as well as myself, obviously, in terms of our relationship. And so it's not, not, from that you can see that a lot of the emotions she has, and it's very important for what I feel, and I'm saying this from my perspective now, I feel it's very important that if you want to understand my lovely lady, you need to understand how those emotions would affect her, her or you in that situation. Yeah. Also, um, because AJ has dealt with so much emotion, he can call me online really easily. <laughs> and unless I'm in a place of complete humility, <laughs> You know, it can be quite challenging to hear that. And when I have, I've had a lot more and I still have some sort of anger at men emotions and there's a man who's in your life who's constantly sort of pointing out, in a very loving way, but pointing out what's going on for you. It took me a while to work, it triggered lots of stuff. I was on the lounge room floor, I was crying, I was screaming, 
and at one point I opened one eye just to see how many hours I cried for four hours because that's what's in me. Um, so, like, the truth is what's in me. If, if, you can, if you can picture yourself being in a 20 seconds fear state and then being, then coming from that state, being the very first person to come from that state into a first fear state, which is what the earth state is. And, and the huge emotions that that triggers. Um, then what's happened within me is I'm, I'm ultra sensitive to emotion. So uh, because I'm ultra sensitive to emotion, my emotions are often, often far more in excess of what the average person would need to experience. And so, uh, so basically, I'm a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once once you work through those emotions, like it, it will all depend on how sensitive you were to the emotion as to how great the emotional experience is going to be. Today. So, in my case, um, the, the truth is that I was the most sensitive person of, of those who have returned to Earth or even ever come to Earth again. And so, naturally, the depths of my emotions that I've had to experience are going to be far greater than those that you would have to experience. Uh, <laughs> and many of you feel a sense of relief. <laughs> and that's good. Like, in the end, you won't have to experience these things that I've experienced. Um, I chose this experience so that I can understand your emotions and also be in a position to be able to advise anybody who comes to me with almost any emotion uh, because I've personally experienced it. So don't feel that you'll have to experience exactly what I've experienced. And the truth is, for Mary and all of the others of the 14 too, their experience has been less intense and sometimes I've been quite jealous because like I'll be dealing with a causal emotion about say some kind of issue for four months and it gets released and then uh, one of the others of the 14 do it in two weeks and I go damn, I go, damn, I want that um, and for the m many of you you'll find you'll be able to do, deal with that same causal emotion because it's not as intense in you, you may be able to deal with it in four hours so, so that's why I've said to you quite often that um, you do not, you, many of you could easily be at one with God before I am again because of the, de of the amounts of emotions that are within me because of that sensitivity between the 20 seconds here and the first. And I know many of you don't sort of grasp that intellectually at this point, and that's okay. Um, but at some point in your progression, you will start to understand that at an emotional level and you'll start seeing the contrast and and you'll feel that in your heart, so you'll be able, you'll be able to understand it then. Uh, so, but Mary does cry a lot. But it was something I had to work through because when I first started, I thought, um, if I start crying, I'll never stop. Um, I'm gone forever, and I had a lot of stuff to work through around crying. Um, yeah, and I still go back to that place sometimes. Oh, all right, yesterday I had a big tantrum because I didn't want to deal with these emotions. I hadn't lived this life this time and, you know, why do I have to deal with this stuff? Um, yeah. But I'm much more comfortable with crying now. And I, I don't time. <laughs> 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 so, um, If you come down a bit and speak near the mic here, um, we might be able to get some of these questions. Thanks, Jen. Um, I've had a pretty tough week. A lot of emotions, a lot of crying, a lot of frustrations. But I think the core of it is about a relationship that I had with a man about five years ago. Um, he ended it after two years. And I kind of I felt okay about that because I felt as though there was stuff that I couldn't stand about him either, you know. <laughs> but now I kind of understand that it's about emotional wounds and, and us, you know, bantering against each other. About 12 months ago, um, I went camping 
with some friends and he was there and all of a sudden it was like freaking hell I'm in love with this man again. It was just so intense and so emotional and I thought what is this all about? So for this last year I have been fighting this and I have been I've talked to him about it. He's with another woman at the moment. But all I could say was, I feel so happy when I'm in his presence. And that's the biggest part that I can't handle. And I'm wondering if it's because he's my soulmate. And I just don't know how to deal with it. I don't want to feel like I'm a, um, um, somebody's stalking him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to push him away with the friendship that I have. But I don't know how to deal with it and it's affecting the rest of me. It, this last week at work has just been, everything has been annoying me and I've been crying a lot and Last night and this morning I realised every time I say the word pain, I just, I'm just so, so in pain. And I want to get rid of it. But I want to know how to deal with this. I feel as though I've got to leave, leave the coast because I can't seem to get anywhere with it. So if you've got any insights, please. Magic wand. <laughs> Of not being with this man, 
right? And that isn't the cause of emotion. The cause of emotion is this deep emotion about being abandoned by your own father, right? From an, an emotional level. And that's the emotion that you avoid. And see, what we, what we do when we have this really strong, powerful emotions inside of us, we then have an att a tendency to go for the addiction. So in this case, you have a soul longing for your soulmate, because I can feel that longing from you. You believe this man might be your soulmate, but actually one of the greatest, he might be, and I'm not saying he is or he isn't at this point, even if I might know, right? But the important thing is that right at the moment, he is the trigger back to this causal emotion of being abandoned by somebody you desperately want to love you. And that's the emotion you need to allow yourself to feel. So, and that's a, once you feel that emotion, the irony is, if this man is attracted, if this man is your soulmate, he will actually feel more attracted to you after you felt the emotion than he could feel now. Because at the moment, what he would have to do is to feel this needy feeling inside of you to not be abandoned. Does that make sense? And that's not love. So, so in the end, you need to go through, as Mary said, go through the causal emotion, which is always going to be related to your childhood in some way, and and not to this relationship with man. Now, when you do meet your soulmate, often your soulmate triggers the biggest emotional responses in you. And in fact, many of those emotional responses, because you have injuries inside of yourself, they're going to be so powerful and overwhelming that you're just going to want to run away from that person and never want to see them again. I've been talking uh, recently to a friend of mine overseas in the Bahamas, and she's got this thing going on with her soulmate. She sees him quite often in the street, and she knows he's <coughs> her soulmate. And she feels so angry with him that, she, that he doesn't want to be with her. And she keeps ringing me up and saying, I'm a good woman, you know, I'm looking really good now. And, you know, because yeah, she has, she's looked, worked through all of these emotions and she's looking quite good now and feeling really confident in herself. Why doesn't he want me, you know? And, and instead of getting deeper than that, she's just focusing, why doesn't he want me? She knows he's, he's, he is her soulmate. Why doesn't he want me? When in reality, the issue is about her dad that she hasn't worked through yet and not allowing yourself to work through because it's quite painful. And instead wants to solve this addiction that's inside of her by getting a person who's her soulmate, or even who she wants to believe is her soulmate, to uh, satisfy those unhealed emotions within herself. Because in the end, what will happen is you will attract your soulmate when you no longer need them. Do you understand that? You will attract your soulmate when you no longer need them, no longer angry with them, no longer... And we think about it, if your soulmate is of the opposite sex, let's say you're a woman and your soulmate's a man, if you have any anger with men issues inside of yourself, you're already at the soul level rejecting your soulmate. Right? And until that emotion is healed, you will not attract your soulmate. And if you have any feelings of neediness towards men, you are at that moment rejecting your soulmate. The only time your soulmate could come to you with that emotion in you is if he is also willing to be look after a needy woman. Does that make sense? In other words, if his emotions were compatible with yours. The only way really to attract a soulmate is for your emotions to be so compatible with everybody that at the end you'll attract the soulmate whatever his condition or her condition is. And the ironic thing is I'm having the best relationship with my dad at the moment that I've had. And remember last two weeks ago, I said to you that that's causing you to hold on to some of these emotions. Because, because you don't want to go down the track of saying, Dad, you were a naughty dad back then. You know, that's, you, because you're so, because he's now nice to you, and you've got a good relationship now, but there's all this unhealed emotions. I don't want to get angry with you. That's right. I want it to be, because I've always wanted it. You want it to be fixed, because now you're getting what you need, and this is part of the addiction. And now you're just transferring that addiction onto this man who you feel is your soulmate. So the key is to just go back into the emotion. Go and see him as many times as you can to trigger him, to trigger you. Do the opposite of what you feel like doing. Definitely don't be the sunshine case. You know, let, let, every time you see this person, let it trigger you and understand that it's related to your dad. No worries. Jen's going to go for a walk in the garden. So it's
she's, she's so good at processing emotion. I'm so impressed with her. <laughs> Any other questions? About six months ago, I sort of came upon my palm. It's called I Remember Union. It was written by, um, I think it's Flo Fabia Maria, someone came into I don't know whether the author was channeling the Spirit Mary or, or what it was, but it was written in, in, a, in a first hand account. So it was not my story, and this is my story of Mary Magdalene. And, um, it was very powerful for me to read. It's beautifully written. I sent to America to, to buy a copy for myself. And um, I mean, I found it a magnificent account of the life of Mary, um, according to this to this spirit or this author. Um, and I was struck by how much it was uh, the courage of the person Mary Magdalene in um, basically sort of almost making a contract with Jesus before they. Before before they came to earth at that time, at the time of the first birth, and um, how much love and support Mary Magdalene gave to Jesus at that time that went unnoticed, that was that was really not noticed and not obvious, and, and very much to her own detriment. Um, I don't know whether what what spirits channeled this information because I'm thinking, sitting here thinking that book must have been written after, well after you were born in this lifetime. Um, but also, I, I was training at a workshop at that time with, with over 100 people and I got up and talked about this book and I was amazed at the energy and the effect that it had on the other women at that workshop, a couple of people are here with me, but it, it, it had the effect of really bringing a lot of, um, I don't know, courage and openness and the women, it changed the energy of the women at, at that it truly changed the energy of the women at that uh, conference at the time. And I concluded that there's something about Mary Magdalene energy on earth right now that is, is crucial, and particularly to, to, to womankind. Yeah, really, it's just a comment rather than requiring an answer, but I guess I was thinking we must have energetically set up that there would be, you know, we've given a lot as a, as a person Mary to Jesus, a, a lot by way of, of incredible courage um, at your own, own expense, which is what came through in this book. And I don't, and as I've said before, I don't know which channel the book, but I would imagine that, um, you know, that a lot of those emotions would be, would be good. Thanks. Um, I, uh, I don't really understand how this whole soul works mine um, because I'm aware that um, AJ has channeled things since he's been born and I know he has some feelings about the capability of my soul to channel things and that's kind of thing that really does my head in that kind of freak out a little bit because it just seems bigger than who I am and um, we were having a discussion in the car on the way over here and I said to AJ that I don't even identify it with the name Mary Magdalene. Like, I just have a feeling of having had this life and being connected to him and being connected to his life. And yes, that's the life of Jesus, but this woman Mary Magdalene, well, if that's me, Uh, but I'm just trying to be who I am and uh, I'm quite scared about a lot of um, people having perceptions about me and, or, um, and being critical of me because I don't actually feel that I'm that flash person like and um, I don't it seems like the two big groups of people and, and especially being the other half of this soul and like it's it's really full on sometimes for me to think about those things but I'd like to read the book. Um, the book was channeled uh, by a spirit uh, who doesn't know everything about Mary's life, but uh, but who was able to channel through some of the filters of the woman channeling um, a lot of the details about the emotions of the life. 
but you are right that, uh, like, one of the things that I've said to Mary, in fact, when I first replied to her, I said to her uh, some things about the importance of her, um, and this will trigger Mary. But I, I feel that um, that there are so many things in the last two thousand years. There's been so many things unsaid about her life. So many things uh, also unsaid about the feminine side of God as well. Uh, and one of the things that I ideally want to correct, and I attempted to correct in the first century, but didn't, I didn't feel that successful with it. Um, but one of the things I definitely want to correct is is this whole imbalance between the masculine and the feminine. And one of the imbalances at the moment has to have there is a lot of different imbalances that are occurring on between the masculine and the feminine, and many women are looking to a, to a person to be sort of like a role model, if you like, of what it means to be a woman. And there is a danger in that, in that, uh, in that, you know, looking to Mary to fulfil that role, just like looking to me to fulfil the role of the opposite uh, on the male side, is actually disconnecting you from God. And it's really through your connection with God that you will become as as womanly, if you like, or as feminine, or as masculine, if you're a male, as you can possibly be. And that will that will be the connection that actually heals you. But it is natural, I suppose, to look at uh, people who we believe can give us that courage. But be careful of doing that in your own lives, because in the end, true courage comes from your relationship with God and no other source. So if you can just bear that in mind. It's not a very passive ride. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Mary? Um, is it a question that Far away. Just a, a practical question. I understand recently you left where you were living, moved to the what seems like totally remote place, out of the world, to be with AJ. Could you just describe to me in simple terms how you got to the point where you gave up your life, moving? It took a long time, well it took a year, and I really resonated with the whole teaching 